Sunday on Denver 7. President Biden is on his way to a community in mourning. This comes as more information about that tragic day that led to the deaths of 19 children and two teachers in Uvalde, Texas, is coming forward. The head of the Texas Rangers was pretty clear. These officers did not follow training they received just two months ago. How the parents of one Colorado shooting victim are offering support across the country. And if your wallet is feeling the heat ahead of your Memorial Day barbecue, you're not the only one. We're taking a closer look at the unexpected costs of this weekend. And a little later, I felt kind of cheated. That would be such a huge weight off my shoulders uh, because I don't have to worry about my parents. We'll find out any day now if some student loans will be forgiven. We're going 360 in depth on how Coloradans feel about what's on the table. Good Sunday morning to you and welcome to Denver 7 News. I'm Jessica Crawford. Here's a look at what's happening across the metro today. While Children's Museum is having a fundraiser, there's going to be an afternoon full of carnival games, face painting, and a silent auction with all the proceeds supporting the museum. It starts at 1 o'clock off Harrison Avenue in Lafayette. The Denver Arts Festival is back for its 23rd year. It aims to showcase Colorado and artists from across the nation. It's at Central Park starting at 10 a.m. For more information, you can head to DenverArtsFestival.com. The Colorado Veterans Project is hosting its Memorial Day run today. The race raises money for veterans experiencing homelessness. In addition to a traditional race course, you can also ruck march, carrying a 25-pound rucksack full of non-perishable foods to be donated post-race. Registration is already underway, and that race started at 8 o'clock. You can also complete a virtual race through Tuesday. Let's take a look outside right now from our Lookout Mountain camera. It is 9.02. Meteorologist Stacy Donaldson joining us this morning. And Stacy, we have some rain coming our way later today. We do. We have a little instability here for the next few afternoons, and we're going to be dealing with some rain uh, later in our afternoon hours here for today and tomorrow. Looks great in Boulder right now. We're seeing lots of sunshine, a few high clouds, and we had some wet weather earlier at Winter Park. It looks like most of that is cleared out as those skies are uh, seeing more sunshine. We do still have rain up toward Craig and some lightning strikes up that direction, but here for the Denver area, partly cloudy skies. So we're keeping a close eye on these showers that are already taking place in northwestern Colorado and later today we'll see our own scattered showers as we get into the later part of the day but up until that point we'll have temperatures only in the 70s today we've been close to 90 the last few afternoons but today upper 70s even cooler tomorrow and we do have scattered showers in store so we'll talk more about the extended forecast coming up. This is a live look at the growing memorial in Uvalde, Texas this morning after 21 lives were taken last week. President Biden, along with First Lady Dr. Jill Biden, are making their way to show support to the community later on today. Here's ABC's Christine Sloan. Today, President Biden and First Lady Dr. Jill Biden will travel to Uvalde, Texas, as the community continues to grieve the 21 lives lost in a horrific school shooting. Memorials continue to grow as the recovery continues for those hurt in the attack. Among them, Noah Orona. Video shows him at an awards ceremony at Robb Elementary before the shooting, he was later shot. The bullet went through his back and out his shoulder. His parents say he played dead while waiting more than an hour for help. He saw his teacher get shot and land on top of one of his classmates. I'm not sure who at this point for sure, but the other teacher was uh, shielding the, ch the children. Investigators say a teacher propped open a school door at 1127, which the shooter used to enter the school. At 1133, he targeted classrooms 111 and 112. Two minutes later, seven Uvalde police officers are inside the school, but did not breach the classroom. Officials say school district police chief Pete Arredondo wrongly believed it was no longer an active shooter situation, but a barricaded subject. But from 1203 to 1247, students were dialing 911 from inside the classroom, begging for help. 
Meantime, 19 officers were in the hallway outside those classrooms. It wasn't until 1250 that authorities used a key to enter the classroom and killed the shooter. The district trained for this type of situation back in March, practicing scenarios and utilizing the state's extensive course manual, which advises that first responders should not wait, saying the best hope that innocent victims have is that officers immediately move into action, adding a first responder unwilling to place the lives of the innocent above their own safety should consider another career field. The head of the Texas Rangers was pretty clear. These officers did not follow training they received just two months ago. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. It's not just Texas that's grieving loss this morning. Vice President Kamala Harris spent Saturday at a funeral in Buffalo, New York, where 10 people were shot and killed. This happened in a racially motivated mass shooting two weeks ago. Enough is enough. We will come together based on what we all know we have in common, and we will not let those people who are motivated by hate separate us or make us feel fear. From Buffalo to Texas and more than a dozen other places struck by tragedy, the parents of an Aurora Theater shooting victim show up and support victims' families, and they help survivors cope with their trauma. Denver 7's Christian Lopez joins us live. And Christian, the couple was in Buffalo helping after that mass shooting. Now they're headed to Uvalde. Yeah, Jessica, they are, and this couple lost their 24-year-old daughter in the Aurora movie theater shooting nearly a decade ago. And ever since then, they've made it their mission to honor her by making sure that no other family has to go through this alone. Sandy and Lonnie Phillips lost their daughter Jesse in that shooting. And just recently, they were in Buffalo, New York after the grocery store mass shooting. And while they were there is when they learned about the shooting in Uvalde and they booked a flight to Texas. This is now the 20th tragedy that they've been to. And while they praise changes in state laws, they are calling on the federal government to do more. It continues to happen because our politicians will not grow a backbone and do what's right for this country and the people of this country. If we don't do something and do it quickly, every single person in America will be affected by gun violence in one way or another. And the couple has a nonprofit called Survivors Empowered. And if you'd like to support their efforts, we have a link on our website, thedenverchannel.com. Live this morning, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Christian, thank you. The NRA convention in Houston wraps up today, and it's been met with backlash and protests. The convention is a few hundred miles away from Uvalde and becoming a place for people asking for gun reform to voice their concerns. Inside the convention, prominent Republican figures are condemning the recent violence, but they're rejecting calls for gun reform. Why did you decide to come out? Because my daughter is a teacher, and she had to learn how to pack bullet wounds in her classroom in order to teach. I shouldn't go to school and be scared that I, I could get hurt that day because we can't control our guns. As always, in the wake of these tragedies, the various gun control policies being pushed by the left would have done nothing to prevent the horror that took place. Absolutely nothing. Recent data shows the majority of Americans support some kind of action here from lawmakers and 90% are in support of expanded background checks. If you're about to hit the grocery store for some pre-barbecue prep, this year's holiday might cost you more than you expected. We're taking a closer look at what's going to drive up the numbers of the register.